Do you want to know why we still talk about Kotaku, pretend they have any sort of relevancy when we report on them? Because their writers go on to join the mainstream media with outlets like Bloomberg to try and convince normies of a narrative that just isn't accurate, much like they did here. So welcome back to Words of Paradise, I'm your host, Leon Idol, and Bloomberg Reporter claims Sweet Baby Ink Boycott that crushed Suicide Squad kills the Justice League sales is just angry hallucinations created by grifters. We're talking about Bloomberg here, genuinely the mainstream media. Something that individuals read if they want to pretend that they are informed or know what's going on in the world Despite the fact they are an absolute left-leaning propaganda outlet And now we've got one of their ex-Kotaku employees working for them Trying to talk about Gamergate 2 and Sweet Baby Inc. as if these individuals, as if the readers Would know or care about what that is These are the games they play and this is why we continue to call them out So we're gonna get into this article before we do Hit that subscribe button, I'm a nerdy news channel, I cover nerdy news every day Not always about Gamergate or the mainstream gaming industry However, it's still stuff that we need to talk about, especially with Gamergate 2 showing no signs of slowing down. Bloomberg reporter Jason Schreier, who previously worked at Kotaku, so uh, Smash JT, another one for your list if he isn't on there already, claims that the Sweet Baby Eating boycott that helped crush the sales of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is angry hallucinations created by online grifters. Yes, those of us that have been re reporting on this for literally over two to three months now, those of us that are getting thousands upon thousands of views, uh, you know, is spreading the message out there to individuals that have no idea or not completely informed, or at this point are completely informed and want to know how the updates are progressing. Whether you like individuals like me or Hypnotic or Grums doesn't alter the fact that there is massive changes coming in to the gaming space. Summer Game Fest is around the corner and almost nobody's excited because AAA games are dead. We are seeing a moratorium on AAA games, it's not just Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. We've seen failure after failure after failure in the gaming space. We've seen uh, individual, we've seen entire studios like Volition shut down, all because people actually do care about this and are following this, which is why you see an interest in the mainstream media like Bloomberg trying to curb the narrative or rewrite history. They're not saying the game didn't fail, but they are trying to say that it didn't fail because of us, because of Sweet Baby Inc., because of Gamergate 2, completely shifting and altering what's going on. Schreier recently published an article for Bloomberg claiming the, the, the reveal inside details about the failure of Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, and his article claims that the game's $200 million failure is due to a constantly shifting vision a culture of rigid perfectionism. Is that what you want to call it? Perfectionism? From from Suicide Squad Kills the Justice? Even if they had rigid perfectionism, by that logic, the game would have come out and been perfect, but it would have been perfect to their detriment due to all the delays, due to the fact that they were, you know, promising more than they could choose. So no, no, no. Rigid perfectionism had no, no reason and no bearing on the game's failure. There are cases you can make where an attempt at perfectionism can cause games to fail. In fact, that's one of the reasons I can't stand Hideo Kojima so much is because I think that, uh, you know, he, he is an auteur, you know, his, his rigid perfectionism, in my opinion, is actually a detriment to the studio and the games he makes, but hey, that's just my opinion, the fact of the matter is, that's not what happened in the case of Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League, generic looter shooter that is the same as pretty much any other big budget game on the market right now that uses a bat battle pass, requires all the time online connectivity, and relies on the strength of it being a well-known major IP, or at least as well-known and major as you can call Suicide Squad, and it didn't translate like the sales even with all of that and his genre pivot was ill suited for the studio he also noted the game was plagued by countless delays however he makes no mention of this sweet baby ink detected steam curator list created by brazilian gamer cabruz rambo that has nearly 400,000 followers. Yeah, that's right. We're talking, we're almost 400,000 followers on Sweet Baby Ink Detected, which admittedly has slowed down over the last several months, but no, that's because there's not been a whole lot of new updates, a whole lot of new news. A lot of these uh, consultation companies have gone quiet, gone silent, gone dark. You know, they, they've, they've had their lackeys like Alyssa Mercante go on block sprees, run defense as much as they can, and now they are hiding. They are in the shadows. Remember, sunlight is the best disinfectant. Yes, the DEI detected website by Cabrutus is still under construction, it's still up and running, he's still getting things going properly, but at the end of the day, we're probably not going to see a lot more growth on this Steam Curator page, uh, at least not unless some sort of other major event unfolds, but this is still almost 400,000 individuals, you're trying to tell me that 400,000 individuals, 400,000 potential customers saying, nah, I'm outski, I'm gone, deuces to this game because of Sweet Baby Inc.'s involvement and because of the DEI and ESG agendas, uh, that didn't harm the game, homie is living in a fantasy. Either he's living in a fantasy or he knows, he knows for sure that this is true and completely omits it because again, 
They want to sell you a different narrative. Now, if you go to that particular outlet, you know, if you go to Bloomberg, behind the scenes, this is the article in question, behind Suicide Squad, year's uh, biggest video game flop, well, look at that, it, it, it's paywalled. So, I'm, 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 not, I'm sorry, I'm not going to pay for Bloomberg just to give you guys this article. No, I, I don't need this to be, uh, you can stay behind a pay paywall. We got that part placed covering it. That's good enough for me. The list is essentially a boycott list of all games the Sweet Baby ain't worked on that are available to purchase on Steam. The first game added to the list was Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. And this is what started it all. I mean, well, really what started it all was Chris Kindred and their ilk trying to get the, the Steam page taken down. That's what brought real notoriety to it. But the fact of the matter is, this is the catalyst that started it all. You're telling me that, that there's been three months of of massive growth in this movement. There have been, how many new YouTubers popped up? How many individuals have you found? How many channels have you found? Just because of this discussion. And you're telling me that they had no bearing whatsoever on the complete flop that this game was. Now, I'm not going to say it wouldn't have, it, that the game would have been a success without our coverage. Absolutely not. This game probably was going to do mediocre regardless. But the fact that it's a $200 million flop that is it's making Warner Bros. consider whether they even want to continue in the gaming space anymore... Yeah, that wasn't organic, that, or I guess it was organic, but it was organic on the behalf of all of us, and especially Cabrus Rambo, who has brought this to light because sunlight's the best disinfectant. Since its creation, the list has evolved to include games that are infected with DEI agenda, but have not employed Street Baby Inc. Cabrus also added the game that he recommended to the list, The Great Rebellion, which he declared is 100% DEI free. So there you go, for those of you that are curious about a DEI free game, apparently you got one right there, uh, uh what's it called, The Great Rebellion. So, good on that. You know, obviously pointing out games that do not have this bringing uh, attention to those so that we can make them successes to show the industry by voting with your wallet hey this is what we want that is a good move and sweet baby's involvement in the game was a major problem for many gamers with youtuber and demion who has nearly 250,000 subscribers noting the writer amy lee shaw in sweet baby inc ruined the game he shared in a he shared in february a week after the game release of course amy tries to take the moral high ground here but the truth is the damage is done and what her, and her team over at sweet baby has done to suicide squad not to mention other games like spider-man 2 and more everything they touch lessens and cheapens the stories and characters within them it's gotten so bad the name sweet baby is all but considered a taboo term it's just as bad as when customers label a product as woke now. I would say it's worse. I would say it is far worse when you see that Sweet Baby Inc. is involved in the game because Sweet Baby Inc. still has some sort of tangible reality to it. People hear woke and they think, you know, woke's a catch-all term. Woke at this point has lost meaning. And while I'm guilty of using the word uh, more often than I like, it's still a word that does have use. It's still required for certain, uh, you know, certain discussions. No, Sweet Baby Inc. is actually far worse than woke because when you hear Sweet Baby Inc., that immediately brings to mind something that is tangible, something that isn't sort of ethereal, something that isn't just a, a buzzword at this point. You know, Sweet Baby Inc. is still looked at as a physical problem in the gaming space, as are all these other consultation companies. Black Girl Gamers, um, you know, this is, uh, Gamer X, G A Y, Gamer X. All, now, none of them had the, the name recognition that SBI does because the movement started off as SBI detected. But anytime these consultation companies come up, we know it's a problem, and immediately in, folks are inundated with information about it. You were seeing blacklists on X, you were seeing reporting. It's been absolutely Absolutely incredible for the game. The last three to four months at this point. Now openly stating your game has any relations to Sweet Baby has become code for people to avoid that product entirely like the plague because chances are whatever your game is, if Sweet Baby's involved, it'll be ruined and made into a pandering mess to some capacity, he added. Despite this, Schreier declared that Sweet Baby Inc.'s involvement with the game had nothing to do with his disastrous sales. Here is the meat and the potatoes, boys and girls. Nothing to do with it. First, he informed a user who questioned him why he did not mention Sweet Baby Inc. in the article at all, saying, This article is about what actually happened. That reminds that reminds me a lot of Alyssa Mercante's uh, running defense article where she talks about how, you know, oh, you know, I I'm not here to report the facts. I'm here to report on my narrative and twist it to make it work. Like, that is exactly what's happened. We see Justin Boy here saying, No one mentioned, not one mention of the woke turning up fans or SBI influence. This article is about what actually happened. Homie, how are you going to deny that that's what's actually happened? That that's like writing an article. That's like writing an article about the Bud Light boycott and not mentioning Dylan Mulvaney whatsoever. It's, oh, yeah, no, I, I guess a bunch of rednecks just up and decided that they prefer, you know, uh, ultra-right dad's conservative beer or whatever that dumbass brand is. Like, imagine writing an article about the Bud Light boycott 
leaving out Dylan Mulvaney entirely and saying, oh yeah, no, this is about what actually happened. Twisting the narrative in real time. That is 100% what Homie is doing here. When pressed on the matter, he added, I asked two dozen people who worked on the game what went wrong. Yes, that worked on the game. You asked individuals that worked on the game. Of course, they're going to cover for their buddies in the industry. They're going to cover for Sweet Baby Inc. They're going to cover for these consultation companies. They're all in bed with one another. That is absolutely insane. Hey, if if somebody... I, I was going to give an analogy, but we all know how this works. Okay, if, if, if homeboy, you've got a buddy, you've got a best friend who did something wrong. Now, there's two types of people in the world. There's those that are going to rat their best friend out, and there's those that are going to stand by their side. So if you're like, hey, you yeah, know, I, I went and asked several of his friends if he did anything wrong. None of them said he did. Well, yeah, no kidding they didn't say he did anything wrong. They're his friends. They're going to stick by him. Now, whether that's good or bad, you can argue it doesn't matter, but that's how the industry works. The industry is symbiotic. They feed off of one another, and they feed off of one another in completely vile ways. So yeah, if you're going to ask two dozen people who worked on the game what went wrong, they're not going to tell you, oh, our woke ESG agenda-driven propaganda bogus uh, third-party consultation company screwed it up for the rest of us no because SBI is still going to be working on other games with them in the future it's a mutual symbiotic relationship but of, you would expect Homeboy, I guess you wouldn't expect Homeboy to do any sort of proper journalism because he, he works for Bloomberg and used to work for Kotaku. Um, n n not one single one mentioned the word sweet baby. You're chasing angry hallucinations, hallucinations created by grifters who make money off of your rage. And you know what? That's fair. We do make money up your rage. I had March, uh, April, May have been my most successful months on YouTube financially, monetarily. But you want to know why? It's because these individuals, individuals like you watching who I can't not say thank you to enough. Thank you so much. It means the world to me. Are coming to my live streams. Are coming to Hypnotics live streams. Are coming to other people's pages, and they are taking the money they would be spending on these AAA games. Instead, they're using it to support us to get the word out there, to get the news out there, in hopes of eventually making this culture better. Because that's all we want. At the end of the day, is we want to see good things. We want to see our games and our movies and our comic books and everything nerdy that we loved and have grown up on not be bastardized and destroyed. And if getting our reach out there, if getting our message out there, using our channels to get the word out there fixes that over the course of you know whatever amount of time it takes then yeah the money is honestly better spent there same reason i donate to other live streams same reason people donate to me it's a cyclical uh it, it's a cycle that we will continue to that we will continue to move forward until we see change and we are seeing change we've actually seen maybe not necessarily in the gaming space but when it comes to comic books when it comes to film when it comes to tv we actually are seeing change so it's proof that it's working the gaming industry is just further behind than hollywood is on catching up to this mess after claiming his article that one of the reasons the game failed was due to a constantly shifting vision schreier then contradicted himself and declared last thing i'll say on the topic the premise and story of suicide squad killed the justice league were the vision of septon hill director of the arkham trilogy anyone who tells you that sweet baby made them kill batman or do anything else is lying period um i don't really see how he's contradicting himself here I, I i maybe i'm maybe i'm dumb but that's just uh i mean that's probably a true statement i, I doubt sweet baby Inc. made them kill batman but that doesn't help any of the uh, atrociously written dialogue, the awful character moments, the, the subversion of expectations, the modern day writing, the complete and utter feminization of certain characters. I mean, let, let's be real here. Even if that statement doesn't contradict itself, it didn't help the game. The game was not going to succeed. It was not going to fail that hard either, though. We absolutely made a difference on Suicide Squad. Caputus Rambo made a difference. Anybody that covered this nonsense made a difference. Anyone that's continued to cover this nonsense is continuing to make a difference. You want to know how we know? Because we are seeing the video game industry, at least the AAA industry, die before our very eyes. Silent Hill 2 trailers were they were obliviated to use a Harry Potter reference in the uh, in, in the downvotes. You look at Assassin's Creed Shadow. That game, regardless of whether or not you how uh, you feel about Yasuke, that game got utterly destroyed in every single trailer release. People were talking about it. Got discussion going. Yes. Changes are being made. Changes being affected by individuals watching these news stories, watching these channels. Obviously, you're going to have people like Bloomberg who, again, have an absolute let lean according to all sides media. You can you can easily just Google search, hey, what websites have uh, you know th this sort of bias? Or does insert website here have a media bias? And it will tell you, yes, it's a right-leaning bias. It's a left-leaning bias. Go to allsides.com. Google the Daily Wire. They'll show you the right-wing bias. You also go to allsides.com. You check Bloomberg. It shows they've got a left-leaning bi uh, bias. Everyone's got their own biases. So 
Clearly, you've got these individuals who are going to want to rewrite the narrative once they see things falling apart. We've got Summer Game Fest coming up uh, th this weekend, actually. And it's going to be a disaster. I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of L's in the chat for that because people just don't care. So we cannot give them the opportunity. We cannot let them rewrite the narrative. We've got to continue pushing on. Whether it be about video games, anime, movies, whatever it is, in this me in this space, we need to cre uh, create media and call attention to media that is destroying the values that we want to see and that we have seen in our loved franchises in the past. But those are just my opinions. Let me know yours in the comments down below or let me know on X where you can find me at both the word. And please do subscribe. I am a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. Uh, not always about video games, but anime, movies, music, Magic the Gathering, you name it. Check me out on Instagram at words of paradise underscore Leon. And become a member for $4.99 a month. You can join the Discord. Choose the articles I go over on a day-to-day -day basis. Choose videos to me react to on my Friday night live streams. And of course, get involved in the conversation and the discourse with other vital idols. It is a bright, beautiful, glowing, vibrant community that I cannot wait to build even further. We only care about one sort of diversity and that is the diversity of thought. So if that sounds interesting to you, join the Discord, hit the subscribe button, and until next time, it's all here in the Nerdosphere. This has been Words of Paradise.